afternoon and thank you for standing by and welcome to conducting initial and refresher briefing webinar. Your lines have been placed in a listen only mode for the duration of today's conference. I would now like to introduce to you Ms. Renee King. Thank you. You may begin. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our conducting initial and refresher briefing webinar. I'm glad that each of you took time out this afternoon to join us for our last webinar of this fiscal year. Hopefully when we're finished here today, you'll be more educated on initial and refresher briefings and we'll be ready to get out there and create one of your own. But before we jump into our webinar, let's get some of our administrative housekeeping out of the way. We'll start with our introductions. For those I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I am Renee King, Acting Industrial Security External Curriculum Manager here at CDSE and one of your presenters for today's webinar. With me in our webinar studio in Vistacom, Maryland, is our second presenter, Matt McCorkle, one of our industrial security instructors, also here at CDSE. Matt will be leading you through several poll and chat questions and our practical exercise that we've incorporated into our webinar. Also in the studio, or behind the scenes, is our webinar guru, Nancy McEwen. Nancy will be working through our Adobe Connect to ensure everything goes smoothly and that you'll stay connected with us. And last but not least, our talented producer, Rachel Mojo. Rachel will not only be working behind the scenes to make sure we stay on track and on time, but she is also going to provide a few basic instructions on the tools you will need to maximize your webinar experience today. Rachel, they're all yours. All right, thank you, Renee. Welcome to everyone. I'm going to give you a brief tour by telling you about the file share box in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. There are several documents in this box. Of most importance is the practical exercise. Please download this, print it out. It will help you with an exercise that Matt will be doing today. You'll also see closed captioning below. Thank you to our closed captioner. It's tough work to keep up with our quick pace. You'll see spoken words. You'll see her typing our words as we speak them. Next, you'll see our phone line down in the right-hand corner of your screen. If you're disconnected for any reason, this will remain on the screen through the duration of the presentation. There's also a question and answer box. If you have any questions about the webinar content or about initial and refresher briefings, please enter questions into the box. We don't get to them today. We will respond to them online. We'll post responses on the CSE website. And most importantly, we are going to have several poll questions and chat questions. Please respond. Go ahead, select, make selections, enter comments into the boxes. We love having your input. It makes our webinar much more lively. So I'm going to pass this on to Renee. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Rachel. I think it's time to dig into today's topic, conducting initial and refresher briefing. Now, as a facility security officer or FSO, this is one of your responsibilities according to the National Industrial Security Program Operating Manual, or better known as the NISPOM. And it's an important part of the National Industrial Security Program, or simply the NIST. Matt, can you help us get our discussion started? Certainly. Thanks, Renee. Well, let's start off with a chat question to get everybody's brain flowing. Okay. And the first chat question of the day is, what is the purpose of initial briefings? So in your chat box number one there, go ahead and start entering your comments, please. See some of the some of the responses coming back in. Renee says to give a good baseline. Okay. Alana says education. Good. Educate and uh, on procedures. Yep. Now they're coming in. All right, meet NIST POM requirements and to standardize, provide info, educate regarding, okay. I saw a good one that said uh, to um, indoctrinate newly cleared individuals. Okay, okay, good. Basic understanding. Okay. Good, well, good. I think those, these are great responses. Uh, you all have the, the purpose down pretty good. Uh, to provide security guidance to those individuals working with classified information or in a classified environment. All right, so now that we're familiar with the uh, purpose, I have a follow-up question for you. All right, so you guys did very well with that first one. Let's see how this one goes. 
All right, when should an initial briefing be given? Huh. Okay. Hmm. Right, I see uh, Marcus says uh, before uh, initial access. Okay, private access, private access on hire, okay, before access is granted. Yeah. That's a good one. There are a lot of responses out there. Good, good. These are all great responses, okay. Well, um, the answers are, they're pouring in. I think most, most of you guys have a pretty good fix on that. Um, Keep those answers close to you uh, as we go through the slides and determine whether or not your answer was indeed correct. All right, great work again. I'm gonna turn this back over to Renee who will explain an initial briefing requirements in accordance with the NISPOM. All right. Renee. Thank you, Matt. As the title says, we are going to be discussing initial briefing requirements. Now this is a requirement that not only FSOs for the NISPOM, but government security managers have to buy by as well. Now let's take a look at what the NISPOM defines for us as initial briefing requirements. NISPOM 3-107 identifies six items that must be addressed or required in your initial security briefing. The first one is threat awareness. Within your briefing, you must provide information regarding what a threat is. Now, a threat is defined as any circumstance or event with the potential to adversely impact agency operations, agency assets, or individuals through an information system via unauthorized access, destruction, disclosure, modification of information, and or denial of service, DOS. And an insider threat is the likelihood, risk, or potential that an insider will use his or her authorized access wittingly or unwittingly to harm or to do harm to the national security of the United States. So they are the ones that basically have the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. Next, you have to provide counterintelligence awareness within your brief. What is counterintelligence, you may ask? Well, counterintelligence is information gathered and activities conducted to identify, deceive, exploit, disrupt, or protect against espionage, other intelligence activities, sabotage, or assassination conducted for or on behalf of foreign powers, organizations or persons, or their agents, or international terrorist organizations or activities. Now I want you to think about how uh, some ways in which you can make your people more aware of counterintelligence. Discuss what the security classification system is. What is top secret? secret and confidential. How does information even get its designated classification level? Now, it won't hurt to talk to them about how the classification levels are determined and who actually determines them. Make sure during your brief you are notifying your employees of their reporting obligations and requirements. Each employee is required to report certain things to their FSO security manager. What we as instructors often say is report, report, report. Not adjudicate or judge, but simply report. Initial and annual refresher cybersecurity awareness. Matt, I think I hear someone asking what exactly is cybersecurity? Well, cybersecurity is the prevention of damage to, protection of, and restoration of computers, electronic communication systems, electronic communication services, wire communication and electronic communication, including information contained therein to ensure its availability, integrity, authentication, confidentiality, and non-repudiation. Whew, that was a mouthful. But simply put, security of our computers and networks. And finally, you will discuss with your employees any security procedures and duties that are applicable to the employee's job. Now this deals with tasks that are specifically given to a person or a job. Since they're the last ones in the office, they may have to check the security containers or fill out the end of day check. Keep in mind, even though you're not doing the duty, you still have an obligation as the FSO security manager to know how to do it. You can't assign the closing individual the duty of securing the containers when you don't know how to spin the dial and secure the containers yourself. So now let's take a look at some additional information regarding your initial brief. 
Ah, to answer our second chat question, when should an initial briefing be given? Here's the answer. An initial briefing should be given prior to being granted access to classified information. Now, once eligibility has been granted by the CAS, then the FSO and the security manager has the responsibility to provide an initial security briefing before allowing the individual access to program-related classified information. Now, I'm sure you've heard that saying, don't reinvent the wheel. That definitely holds true when talking about an industrial security product. If you have a fellow security manager or an FSO that you know has an outstanding initial brief, then by all means, ask for it. But with that said, you have to ensure that you customize that brief for your location. Now, if you don't have intelligence information at your location, then you know you are going to be removing that information from the board brief. Make the brief your own. Now, the sample used in our exercise is a good start. Build on it to make an effective initial briefing for your employees by simply highlighting any portions of the sample that you want to include in your own initial briefing. Now for the SF-312, which is actually the Classified Information Non-Disclosure Agreement. It is a legally binding contract between the individual who signs it and the United States government in which the individual agrees to never make an unauthorized disclosure of classified information. Now this document is required to be signed prior to individuals accessing classified information at your location or prior to accessing it at the government site. Now, if an employee, after reading and signing that SF-312, intentionally makes an unauthorized disclosure, the signed SF-312 serves as proof that the employee knew, understood, and accepted the responsibility to protect that classified information. Now, this may be presented to a hearing examiner, an administrative law judge, a judge in a federal court, or a federal judge or federal jury. The individual may be subject to civil damages, administrative actions such as denial or revocation of a personnel clearance, or even criminal charges for espionage that's resulting in fine or imprisonment. Matt, I don't think it's worth all that. But you know what? Sometimes the responsibility of holding a personnel security clearance and protecting classified information is too great for the employee. Refusal by an employee to execute the SF-312 or an employee that doesn't desire to perform on classified work is a reportable incident and should be reported in the system of record. Now, it's time to have you do a little work during this webinar. You thought you were going to spend all your time listening to Matt and I. Well, not so. Matt is going to walk us through our exercise for this webinar. Matt, I think they're ready. All right, thanks. Hello again, everyone. So Rachel will be pulling up the exercise uh, over to the main screen. So give her a few seconds to do that. Okay. But hopefully you've uh, already downloaded it and you have that uh, in your hand. So I'll actually be participating in this exercise with you. Uh, what we'd like for you to do in this exercise is ensure that all six of the required topics are in the sample initial brief. You won't have to try to recall the topics because Rachel is also going to provide a list uh, there to the right. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through this, uh, try to move around the same pace. Uh, after I've made it to the bottom, then we'll give a, a chance for everybody to finish up, okay? Uh, our sample is very lengthy, so we're not expecting you to read the whole thing uh, in the allotted time. We just need you to skim through it and um, get through the sample and find the six re required topics, okay? All right, let's begin. Sounds like a plan. You guys, Matt uh, did some speed reading classes. <laughs> Again, I'm just kind of going through and hitting the highlights. One of the, the great things is, uh, I like how Renee said, it, you know, we could borrow this, but we really need to customize it to, to what's specific for our, for our uh, duties as the FSO and what kind of employees we're dealing with. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff in there.
All right, we're getting there. Like definitely SSPs, you know, um, though I mean SPPs. Not all facilities will require SPP, so exactly. you wouldn't want to put that in your security brief. Yep. Okay, so I'm done. But as I said earlier, I'm going to give you guys a little bit more time to finish up. All right, and then the PE chat um, is where we'll be um, responding in there. So tell me, do we have uh, threat awareness in our briefing? So everybody, we're looking for a yes and no answer in our PE chat. Okay, I see, I see. Good, good. Great, they're coming in. Okay, I think uh, we're how, all in agreement yep, on that one. Yep. How about a counterintelligence awareness? All right, lots of yeses. Yep, still some yeses going on. And how about review of the security classification system? Hmm. Do we see that in there? Yeah. I recall seeing it. Good. And employee reporting obligations? Reporting, yes. Good. Okay. And uh, initial and annual refresher? On that cybersecurity? The cybersecurity? Ah, Sarah said no cybersecurity. Oh, we, we got some no's in there. Okay, good. See a lot of no's there. Good. See a lot of no's. Good. All right. How about security uh, procedures and duties applicable to the employees? Okay, yeah. so we're back to yes. Hmm, so Matt, tell me, did we have everything? Yeah, I think they, uh, they hit the high points really good. Uh, they were on top of the ball with the, the cybersecurity awareness being uh, missing out of that. All right, I think so too. Good. Well, uh, Renee, I think we're all finished with that exercise and they did a fantastic job. Good. Uh, thank you for participating with that. And uh, I think we should continue our discussion with regards to delivery options. But before I turn it back over to you, Renee, I wanna give them a poll question okay. that would get their minds on delivery options. Ah, sounds good. So poll question number one. What is the best delivery method for an initial briefing? And you can select more than one if you want. Okay. Face to face, I always like face to face. Uh, yes. Okay. A lot of people do um, that PowerPoint presentation. I'm surprised that not that many do um, emails. I know it, yeah. yeah. Okay. I see some, Good. a little bit of participation with the teleconference. That's interesting. I wonder what the others are. There's two people that says other. Yeah, maybe they can type in the Q&A chat box and let us know. That'd be a good idea. Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Well, uh, PowerPoint and face-to-face, uh, uh, excellent answers, good responses. The, the important thing to remember is probably uh, how the delivery is, uh, the, the method is for the initial brief is probably going to be dependent on what kind of facility you have or where your employees are located, yeah. whether you have that ability to do that while the onboarding is taking place, things like that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back over to Renee and she can give you some advice regarding the delivery options for your initial brief. So let's listen up and see if she reveals any of your choices. Okay, great. Thanks, Matt. Well, you know, Matt, uh, with technology the way it is today, there are several ways in which an FSO or security manager can actually administer his or her initial briefing. Attaching your brief to an email and sending it off is a convenient way in which we often save resources. You can also use that voting button to get their acknowledgement that they actually read it. In person can be either one-on-one -on -one or in an auditorium with a room full of folks. Make sure they're your folks, though. Reach out to your human resources department and consider adding the brief to the welcome aboard package. Now remember when doing your brief to pay close attention whether you need to do an oral attestation. Now oral attestations are usually required for individuals accessing top secret, SAP, SCR, other information, and some contracts will actually contain a clause that specifically requires it. Now, if this is a requirement, have the employee read out loud the paragraph in the SS-312 stating that he or she understands 
and accept the responsibility to protect the classified information. Now, so Matt has the last chat question for us. Matt, take it away. All right, thanks, Renee. So we're going to switch gears now, and we're going to uh, talk about refresher briefings. So our last chat question is, what is the purpose of refresher briefings? Okay. So chat window number three is open there. All right. Looks like several people are typing. And they're all going to come in at once. Yeah. <laughs> to reinforce the responsibilities, that's a good one. Sally said, good to be reminded of obligation to protect classified information. Excellent. To reinforce. Yep, Dan said to reinforce. Reminder of responsibilities, reminders. Okay. Geraldine says updates. Ah, Excellent. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Satisfied requirements. Yeah. That's what Paul said. Satisfied NISPOM requirements. Good. Good job. Educate on changes. Good. To remind employees. You know, you also have to remind some employees. That's right. <laughs> Alana said to reestablish and remind employees of their NISPOM regs. Great. Good. Excellent. Good. Great responses. Great responses. So the purpose of the refresher briefings is really twofold. Uh, Renee, I think they're ready for you to share that with them. Okay, great. Well, let's see. Well, Matt, we have a lot of great answers, as you said, and it is twofold. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. The NISPOM reference 3-108 states refresher training shall reinforce the information provided during the initial security brief. So that's the first part and it shall keep cleared employees informed of appropriate changes in security regulations, and that's the second part, Matt. It shall, that's the polite word for will in the NISPOM, be conducted at least annually. Now, so the topics for the refresher briefing is those same six initial briefing topics and any new changes that have come out since their last briefing or their last refresher briefing. So it's either or. But hopefully, Matt, they got that. So let's go ahead and lead us into our final poll question of the day. Okay, thanks, Renee. Let's uh, let's actually pull up that poll question now, and and uh, we're going to poll you on what are the required topics to include during a refresher briefing. Right. And more than one response should be selected. Mm -hmm. A lot of things pouring in. Matt, I'm surprised I don't see holiday and functions. I What's know. wrong with that? That's important, right? <laughs> that is important. <laughs> Maybe it's just not important for initial, for exactly. refresh yeah. that's it. We have a pretty short crowd today. Good job. All right. Still got a few more comments. I mean, uh, uh, selections coming in. Yes. Good group. They have it. Yep. All right, so yeah, we definitely, uh, the, the answers are overview of security classification systems, uh, threat awareness, counterintelligence, cybersecurity, reporting obligations, security procedures and duties, and policy updates and changes. Yeah. Good job, excellent. Well, that's it for our polls and our chats. Uh, thank you for being an outstanding participation today. I'm going to turn this back over to Renee, who will give you some guidance on the security education portion of NISPOM 3-108. Contractors shall provide all cleared employees with some form of security education and training. Right. Renee? Well, thanks, Matt. Now these are ways in which you can continuously provide security information to your people. Remember the idea here is to make it fun, educational, and keep security at the front of each person's thoughts daily. Now all of the items in the first section can actually be found on our CDSE website. All of them are downloadable, so have at it and enjoy. Also, check out our Security Education and Training Toolkit to get tips on how to create your very own newsletter. Now, this can certainly make for a better security program. You can use a newsletter to get the word out about your next refresher briefing, give them information regarding either your self-inspection of your facility or your most recent Defense Security Service Security Vulnerability Assessment or your SVA. Don't forget to add a security crossword puzzle or a scramble game, maybe even a whodunit column. Make it um, just for your facility. Have fun with it. Now, the Insider Threat Toolkit has various case studies that you can also use. Consider having a Security Awareness Day. This will allow you to bring in various individuals to provide security training to your personnel. Reach out to your DSS Industrial Security Representative, also your IS rep, 
counterintelligence special agent on your CISA, and the information security system professional, the security control assessor, that's the ISSP, SCA, that's what they're called now. They would love to come out and chat about their programs and DSS's mission to support you. Now, if you have a good working relationship, and if you don't, I suggest you consider fixing it with the IT person. Consider having him or her incorporate some security-related screensavers during the workday. As we know, those lips, loose lips still sink ships, and it doesn't hurt to remind them every now and then. Now let's take a look at how we can find these resources that I talked about. So now, Rachel, um, so here's our CDSE main page. Now this is one of the ways in which you can get to our resources page where you find all kinds of great products to assist you. Now, if you type in www.cdsc.edu into your browser, this is the page that you will see. Next, you simply click on Resources. Now, this is one of my favorite pages on the website and where I spend most of my time. Just look at all the resources available right here. On our Registrar's page, you can find contact information as well as step news and announcements. We have 11 industrial security shorts, but about 55 shorts in total. That's for all of our disciplines here. We have 17 toolkits, facility security officer toolkit, insider threat toolkit. So we have tons of toolkits out there for you to help you. We have 12 industrial security job aids, but we have 75 different job aids in total. We have 18 security training videos out there and we have over 90 security posters for you to use in your security program. So now let's take a quick look at our FSO toolkit. So transitioning over to the web layout. So give her just a minute to do that. So our FSO toolkit was designed to be a role-based toolkit. You don't need to know where to look for or what to look for. We have a series of questions that will guide you to what you are looking for. We do a full review of our toolkit each year to keep it relevant and up to date. We also accept items to use on our website. So if you feel that you have a great initial briefing, consider sharing it with us in, um, to include our security education page of our toolkit. Now here are questions that I mentioned earlier. Okay. So, all right, she's on our security education. So if you look at the top, those are the questions that I mentioned earlier. Also here are various uh, sample initial briefings. Uh, this is where your briefing will reside if you decide to send it to us and let us post it. Okay, so we also have um, government required briefings out there. We have training for um, other employees. So we have a lot of information out there. Now that you know how to navigate our website to find the resources you need, Consider making your refresher briefing more dynamic. Take a look at our suggested courses PDF in the file share box. You can share a short, you can create a short brief using each of the suggested courses listed and have your employees complete or view one brief per month. Or make each course required annual training. Some of the courses actually reside outside of STEPS, so they don't need to um, log into STEPS and go into their account. So they can just simply take the course and print off the certificate. Well, Matt, even though we had a lot of fun during this 30 minutes, um, I would like to stay and chat with them, but it looks like that's all the time that we have this afternoon. Yeah. Now, if you have a question you'd like answered, please ask it in the Q&A pod on your screen. We will collect all of the um, questions and post the answers to our archived webinar very shortly. Now, if you have a question for me, don't hesitate to send me an email at the email address you are seeing. If I'm out of the office and you have a question that you need answered immediately, please send an email to our industrial security mailbox. There is someone that monitors that box daily. But before we end this webinar, there is one last activity I'd like you to help us out with, 